Barley bulls and bells. Barley bulls and bells. Snow crest. <laughs>back to foster the meeple a channel all about Borgians. and Borgian things. exactly we are back again today my friends with another pumped up game found in and out and today's preview video is all about i want to see if i can do it you can't you are not do, rodney i didn't do too bad <laughs> you like smoked yourself in the face wait good job i did it Today's preview is on Snowcrest from Grail Games, who very kindly sponsored this video. Now, as per usual with our preview videos, we are going to do a little bit of an overview, and then we're going to do a discussion, and we're going to help you figure out whether or not this is a game for you. Okay? So let's jump in to the overview, and I'm going to stop shaking this lid at you. Watch how much better my flip is. It's you might just be like, why is it just a lid? Uh, it, you should see the mess of the box. <laughs> we made a mess. So, but it's fine. Deep in the remote mountains of a snowy land, holy ones seek to rediscover powerful knowledge that has been lost for centuries. Not only are the ancient scrolls hidden, but they are said to be protected by magical beasts. Through offerings, meditation, and cultural development, they believe the knowledge may be revealed, then peace and prosperity will be restored throughout the land. In Snowcrest, you lead your village and its monastery towards enlightenment. Control a unique faction of priests, farmers, and laborers. Build structures, tend to barley fields, harvest juniper from the forest, present offerings, become lost in meditation, and uncover the secrets of a bygone age. Overcome the monstrous guardians of this knowledge and bring peace and prosperity to the snowfields. All right, we are back, Jeffrey. Tell the people about Snowcrest. Snowcrest is a card management game, mm -hmm. multi-use card game, where you are playing out cards into a three-by-three three grid that represents a, a, your village, essentially. Yep. You can play these cards for their actions in your village, or you can use them to get resources, etc., etc. There's lots of things you can do with these cards. The basic premise of the game is kind of a race for scrolls. So depending on player count, there's going to be a certain amount of scrolls put out, and you're racing basically to collect those scrolls. End game is triggered when there's no more scrolls to collect, and then at the end of that, it's however many scrolls you have, there's points on your cards you can get, and basically it comes down to whoever has the most points wins. Mm -hmm. There's, again, depending on player count, there's global achievements that can happen. There's three actions you can do on your turn. You can activate a card that's already in your village, and you do that by flipping it face down. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. All of the uh, actions are very simple. It's yes. gain resources, spend resources to get a different resource type. So there is a bit a of a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Resource like, management? Resource management, but like a hierarchy. Like some resources, like barley, for example, in this game is easier to get. But you can Correct. buy cards with barley that then will give you maybe uh, gold, which are wild resource or something to that effect. So there's mm -hmm. kind of a hierarchy of resource types. So you can activate cards in your village. You can add cards to your village. And you can do that either from your hand or by buying it from a shared market. Mm -hmm. They're going to go into your village and you activate it immediately. Yes, you have to pay for them. You have to pay Using for them. Using barley. Using barley, it goes goes in your village, and then you activate the ability on the card. The third action is rest. And that's where, as you can probably guess it, you're going to refresh all your cards. You're going to flip them back over face up. If they have any refresh abilities on them, which is primarily gathering resource types, mm -hmm. you will then trigger it during the rest phase. What's interesting about this game uh, is how the rest action plus card play interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So resting is kind of like, I don't want to say a hindrance to your overall engine, but you want to wait to rest for as long as you can. Yes. 
So you might be like, well, I'll just wait to rest. I'll but you wait. can't because in this game, if at any point you have three cards that are face down in a horizontal, vertical, or di diagonal line, the only option you have is to rest. You gotta rest. So you really want to maximize all of your cards that are on in your village before you have to get to a rest action. Mm -hmm. The other thing with this three by three grid is you can play cards on top of other cards. Mm -hmm. So technically you could place cards out that are gonna let you extend your turns, etc., etc. Again, it's kind of this resource management card play game with some unique twists. On top of all of that, there's a, f uh, a few little peripheral mechanisms that Big can word. happen. <laughs> Big word. <laughs> so on your player board, uh, it is a cloth, I will mention in this game. Yeah. On your player cloth, there is a track. There's two other tracks. There's a building uh, section. So mm -hmm. you're actually going to be adding buildings to your player cloth, your cloth as well. And those buildings can tap, basically, or flip to give you additional resources when you're paying for things. Yeah. So certain buildings will give you barley, some will give you, I should probably know bowls, what it's called. And some will give you bells. Bowls and bells, exactly. <laughs> barley, bowls, and bells. Barley, bowls, and bells, exactly. Barley, bowls, and bells. Barley, bowls, and bells. Barley, bowls, and bells. Snow crest. <laughs> That was amazing. You're a nerd. That was amazing. <laughs> that that isn't that was very nerdy. So there is uh, a track of buildings that you're allowed to put out. You can only have so many buildings, but you can kind of replace and and pick new ones if you need to. There's also a meditation action you can take. Meditation is actually kind of unique. Mm -hmm. It's actually like a bidding mechanic. So you're actually going to spend resource types bells, bells. Uh, or tap your forges in order to meditate. Mm -hmm. And it kind of becomes this back and forth to gain a scroll. So let's just say, for example, Jamie's like, I'm going to meditate, and I'm going to meditate with six resources. Six spells. I then have the option to say, take the scroll, or I can spend seven <laughs> beating her out, taking the scroll, and everyone loses their resources. That's a lot of bells. At a two-player count. At a higher player count, if you don't get anything, and you're not the initial bidder, you will get your bells and stuff back. Right. But in a two-player game, you lose everything. So that's kind of how meditation works. The other thing is veneration. So there's a whole stack of guardian cards in Snowcrest. Mm -hmm. And you can take a veneration action in order to kind of overcome that guardian. Yeah. So you're going to flip a card off the guardian deck face up. And it's going to have like a benefit for you for doing it. It's going to have a deterrent for you that you have to overcome. It's usually spending cards, discarding cards spending resources in order to satiate the guardian, essentially. And then there's also on, on these cards a deterrent for everyone else as well. Mm -hmm. They have to spend a thing in order to satiate the guardian as well. And if you don't, there's one final track. It's called the omen track. Yep. And the omen track yeah. is basically going to be negative points at the end of the game, depending on how far down this omen track you go. Okay. You also can go positively into the omen track, which is probably what you want to do. Nice. But if you can't say cheat the guardians, you're going to go down on the omen track. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful with the veneration action. Yes. The only other thing you can do that's of uh, major substance to this game, there's probably some nuance that I'm missing here, but the one other thing you can do is actually gain a forest card. Mm -hmm. And this is to represent cutting down the woods. Spirits. The spirits do not like that. Don't like so, it. When you cut down the forest, it's you're juniper gaining trees. juniper tokens. And it's the only way you can get juniper resources in this game. Yeah. However, depending on player count, you're going to put juniper tokens on top of the forest card pile. So you gain the juniper, and if there's ever no juniper left on the top card, you have to then activate it. And mm -hmm. it's similar to Guardians. It's going to be a deterrent for yourself, for everyone else, and then whoever activated it will then eventually get a bonus. But again, if you can't satiate the forest spirits, you're going to gain Omen. And that's bad. Satiate. That is basically the game. You're going to be doing all of these actions, flipping forest cards, fighting guardians, or mm -hmm. satiating guardians, I should say. Sa Playing out cards into your village, adding cards to your hand, adding resources, racing to grab these scrolls, racing to complete the global objectives until someone achieves victory.
Exactly. And as mentioned, end game is triggered when there's no scrolls left to be gained. Mm -hmm. It is a bit of a puzzly little game, right? Because you are doing a lot of resource management and you are also, as Jeff mentioned, trying to wait as long as you can to do a rest. However, sometimes you want to do a rest because all of your face up cards, you're gonna gain those tokens. Mm -hmm. And your face down like starting cards, you're gonna gain some barley. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to be like, well, I guess this one's going to go to rest and I have these three and I'll use this one and then this and then we'll, anyways, it is a bit of a puzzle that you're kind of working on. And just so you know, you can't, there's no like take that in terms of like, you can't mm -hmm. mess with somebody else's cloth. Okay. No cloth mm -hmm. flip in here or whatever. Um, and everybody has their own player deck. And I believe that your player deck, it's all of the same cards, all the villagers you all yeah. start with. The, the, it's a very solitaire puzzle, except for when you flip the forest cards, the forest cards or the guardian cards. And then there's kind of like that, you also have to do this thing. Exactly. But it's not really a deterrent per no. se. So it is very much a solitaire kind of mm -hmm. puzzle experience. Exactly. And there's a ton of like new villagers that you can bring in. And that is how the game starts to gain variety and a bit more momentum. Because when you start, your deck has maybe less powerful cards in it mm -hmm. than the villagers. Like as an example, there is one card, the Guru. 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 Anyways, there's a Guru card that just every time you flip them, you just gain a point. Scrolls. Scrolls, scrolls upon scrolls. Mm -hmm. Anyways, who is this game for? This game is obviously for somebody who loves cloth. Just kidding. <laughs> this game is for anybody who does enjoy a little bit of a solitaire puzzle. This is kind of, I would say, I would put this in like a quiet game category. Mm -hmm. right because you're just kind of like doing your thing you're putting out your card you're trying to figure out how to optimize your turn and maximize your resources and mm -hmm. you're also trying to get to the guardian cards and the four spirit cards before other players so that you can gain that benefit in the recent game that jeff and i had played he flipped all of the cards and i just i had kept having to pay stuff and i got no benefit and you don't want that Okay, so if you like a little bit of a solitaire puzzle. I will also mention the artwork for this game. It's all animals. So all of the villagers are are different animals. It's like so animorphs. It's like animorphs. There was only Anamorphic. There's only one in there that's a horse that I just didn't trust. I just don't Jamie think a horse. Jamie was very I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't very anti horse. I was ant I don't like the horse as a person. All of the rest. She did say that during the game. <laughs> I, did. I don't trust that horse. Mm -hmm. And I guess what? I didn't invite him to my village. I think it's for people that, you know, are maybe just starting to get into the hobby and are exploring like new mechanisms and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, or people that are have been in the hobby and are kind of just looking for like a lightweight kind of card puzzly game. Yeah. I would say that I wouldn't classify this necessarily as a gateway game, but a light game for sure. Yeah. Like... The rules overhead and the learning is not going to be an overly strenuous task Gateway for you. Plus. Gateway plus, let's call it that. Okay, so it might not be for somebody who is looking for a heavier, crunchier game. Although there can be some crunch in this with how you work your puzzle, um, so it might not be for you. And that, if you hate cloth, just stay away. Okay, if you're looking for you know, player interaction, obviously everything opposite of what we've stated. Exactly. Yeah. Player interaction is super high on your, like, this is what I need my games to have. It's mm -hmm. only got a very minuscule, tiny, little, teeny, teeny little bit, a little bit. Okay. Could be so, a, a, we haven't tried the solo experience, but that's correct. It does have a solo experience. If that's something that you're looking mm -hmm. for as uh, well. I just want to look quickly. So in the solo experience, there is like Varying degrees of like scores, mm -hmm. difficulty levels so that you can, yeah, basically. challenges basically. Kind of yeah. like how Calico would work. Yes. You're doing different challenges. Correct. So, as per usual, as we always say, make sure to do your research, watch lots of videos, read lots of content, check out the rule book, do all of those things to figure out whether or not this game is a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. We are going to have all of the information linked down in the description below. If you do think it's a good fit, if you want to check it out, definitely do so in the description, okay? Click the links. It'll take you to a whole new world or at least a different page on the internet. 
But that is everything that we have for you today on Snowcrest. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, this one, you must go to GameFound. However, other board games, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... Boardroom Game Cafe. That is correct. Do you like snacks? I do. Where do people get snacks? Munchpack. Munchpack. Exactly. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later it is. So I could do whatever I want. And nothing matters. Yeah, I just did it. Because I looked away? No, because you got close to it. You need to move together. Okay, Jeff. Synchronized filming. Mm -hmm. That's a new thing that we're doing. My hair is getting to that point where I want to like take it and put it over one shoulder, but it's still not quite there yet. There's chocolate and there's chocolate. Snowcrest is a board game. Why do you gotta do this to me? Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, this time I'm gonna sit so still so that the background doesn't jump around. Well, it's on you. 